Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. In this episode, we're going to be collecting the stone assets and adding them to our resource piles. Now, the function behind this is going to be very similar to the tree, with some extra bits to be able to determine whether or not they can collect it if they're holding wood or stone already. So, let's begin. The first thing we want to do is create an enumerator which determines whether or not we're collecting wood or stone. So let's go to add blueprints and choose enumeration and call this one e resource and in there we're going to add the two types wood and stone hit save and close that now we want to go to unit tree and on unit tree we're going to add a new variable on here and we're going to do resource type and we're going to change the variable type for that to be our new enumerator e resource hit compile and make sure it's set here to wood now we're going to go to our unit stone and in here because the functionality of this is going to be basically the same as the tree we're going to go to open full blueprint editor go to the class settings and on a parent class, we're going to change it from unit building base to unit tree. Now it will have the exact same functionality and variables as the tree unit. So to demonstrate that, if I go into here and click on my workers, I'll be able to click on this stone and they should go over to it because they see it as just like another tree. The main thing that's going to be different though is we don't want to be collecting wood we want to collect stone so let's determine how that works I'm going to go to my unit tree and at the end of the check here we're doing the set value as vector enum and so forth we're going to do another set value as enum and set the resource over to our behavior tree so it knows what resource it is collecting so we're going to go from our blackboard here set value as enum And we're going to make literal. And we're going to call this in the same vein as we've done our E action. We're going to do E resource enum. And the enum value is this resource type. Compile and save. Now, because unit tree's got wood, we want to make sure unit stone is using stone. So go to unit stone. Go to it over to its right hand side for class defaults, and you should see the option for resource type. Change that to stone. Everything else looks like it should stay the same, which is good. We're going to hit save and compile and close that. Okay, so now we've got the stone working, and it's now returning that blackboard uh, key over to the AI system. We now need to go to our blackboard and add that re uh, that key to it here. Go new key, enum, and call it exactly the same as we just did. So e resource enum. On the right hand side, change the key type to use our e resource. Save. Okay. So now when we click on it, we are now sending our resource type over to our behavior tree and there we can decide on how we add values to our characters and our bases so for the next thing we're going to do is go to unit base and on here we're going to set the wood carrying and change that to just carrying uh, resource carrying we call it okay that's number of resources we're carrying and we want to change or add sorry a new variable and this will be the resource they are carrying so resource held and that'll be the enum e resource so so we've got a resource being held and how many we're holding hit save on that and let's go over to our unit worker and on unit worker we're using the update frame and sending over the number to display we also want to send over the resource we're carrying as well. So double click on your update frame here. 
and it will take you over to the widget which has the update frame on here. Add a new variable to this and that will be the resource we want to add. And again the variable type for this would be that enum, e resource. Make that editable, not editable sorry. Um, go to update frame and add that as an input on here as well. that would be resource and e resource there we go and i'm going to set that to that variable dot here and we'll come back to this later hit save and close that now when we're sending over our update frame we want to plug in the resource we're carrying as well just drag this down and type in resource held. Compile and save that. Okay, now we're going to go to our AI behavior tree. On our AI behavior tree, when it's gone to collect the worker, it's going to go down here and collect resources. We want to go into here and we need, first of all, to know which resource we are collecting. So that's going to come from our blackboard. So on the variables, go new variable and do resource and that would be a variable type of a blackboard key selector making sure you hit the instant editable button toggle that on so you can set which blackboard key it's using with that resource there we can go over to the right hand side and change how this is working here so when we've got resource carrying that's fine that will leave that as is but what we do want to change is which resource we're being held so from as unit base before we move that uh move that along over here we're going to drag the resource out just get and from there we're going to get value as enum now whenever you do get value as enum it does return as a byte what we want to do is switch that over to a enum value itself so you go byte to enum and you type in the name of the enum you want to use so e resource and it'll convert it to the e resource enum from there i could do switch switch sorry from there i'm going to set it to unit base so drag out as unit base and set resource held And plug that all in so now when we are collecting resources we're also sending over what resource they are currently holding we compile and save that we're going to close that and go back to our behavior tree and take a look at our resource here and make sure we set the resource uh, blackboard key to our e resource enum then go to find base location on this task is the action that adds the wood asset to our uh, sort of pool of resources so we want to change that to be not just add wood so if we double click on add wood we've got add wood at wood inventory we're going to add another int integer to this and that'd be stone inventory and that'd be integer again and on here rather than just do add wood we're going to do add resource we can change that from add wood to add resource and what we're going to do here is do a switch based on what resource we want to add so on the inputs here are for the function type in resource as a new input setting it to the e resource enum from there do a switch on e resource now if it's wood it's going to do the same stuff that was already there it's stone we're going to change it a little bit around so we're going to go down here and do stone uh sorry no drag stone inventory and then add to it int plus int stone goes down to uh set stone inventory and that'd be set to there and we're adding the num that's coming from here
Now, as you can see, we've got the cool wood collected. We want to make another one for stone collected. This is what's updating our UI as from the last episode. We're going to drag that out and do cool. But like we have here wood, we want to have stone on here. Click on stone collected, add input, stone, and that'd be an integer. Plugging that all in, hit compile and save that. Okay, we're done here. Now go back to your find base location task. Now currently it's doing this based on the wood resource here. This needs to be changed based on our blackboard key. From the variables, go new variable and do resource blackboard key selector. Make sure you tick editable, drag that out, get, and we want to get a blackboard value as enum and do byte to enum e resource. Plugging it in like so. And there we go. Hit compile and save that. On your behavior tree, make sure you set the resource here to e resource enum and hit save on that behavior tree. Okay, all that stuff now is the UI sort of things. So we need to make the UI for the HUD here update and change based on the stone that we're collecting. So let's go to our UI and go to heads up display, graph here. And at the moment here, we've got bind event wood collected from the RTS game mode. Now we're gonna do the exact same, but for this time for stone collected, the one we just made. Go bind event to stone collected and plug that in and we're going to do a custom event and this is going to work pretty much the same as you see here so update stone <clears throat> and that's going to be the same as we see here so drag out the hud resource bar stone out text get and from there set text Plugging that all in. So let's test that out. Let's go to push play. And let's tell our workers here to pick up some stone. And off they go. Now their unit frame is going to change the number, but it won't change the picture yet. We'll do that next. But we just want to see if they take the wood back, uh, so the stone back, and see the stone update here on the HUD. There you go. We've got now we've got five pieces of stone and now 10 pieces of stone. And there we have it. So what we can do now is make it so that the unit frames will change and update to reflect what resource they're currently holding. Let's go ahead and do that. So on our unit worker frame, uh, we've got the text being updated here and we've got our resource being set over here. We're going to drag our resource variable out now on the event construct after we've done set text. And then from there, we're going to do a switch on e resource. Plug that in. Now, if it's wood, we want to change the image to the wood icon. So get the image out and do set texture. And you set brush from texture. The wood here is going to use our wood icon. So do wood icon. And we'll do the exact same, but for stone, set texture um, for the stone option. Just make sure that when you're doing this, you've got the image plugged in as the target for both of these. Okay, and that will now update the image based on what resource we're trying to collect. The last thing we're gonna do is fix a couple of little bugs. We're gonna go into our AI behavior tree and go to the collect resource. Now on here, we're using the attack target here on the tick as well as the resource as well on the tick. The problem with this is if I were to click on something else whilst they're still mining it, 
their resource that they're registering it will change so i want to change that around so that isn't the case so what i want to do here is i'm going to take the attack target get blackboard as actor cut that from there go up to the execute ai and put that up here promoting this as a variable of course one attack target uh ref so the reference is now stored and it's now static it's not going to change if i were to click on something else because this task doesn't end until the thing is dead so it will just keep doing it until it mined out completely so plug that into input out, uh, input object in is valid and into the damage actor node pin or apply damage and we'll do exactly the same for the resource so i'm going to just cut that from there and we'll save this as a variable board resource ref so it's fixed again in place at the start of the task and then it's used statically throughout so the last bug we need to fix is the bug where it might at the moment if we are mining the rock and uh, we right click on the tree Although the icon doesn't change on the unit, it will change what resources collected ultimately at the end when we return to base. So we're going to go into our um, our uh, unit tree and unit stone. Ultimately, just unit tree because the unit stone is using the same thing. And look at the for each loop. Now the for each loop is going through each of the unit items, and on here we're going to check to see if it's carrying any resources. So you can only click on it if we're carrying no resources. So in here, we'll go um, resource carrying get, and we'll see if that is equal to zero. So if that is equal to zero, put that into a branch. So now you only be able to change anything about our characters details if they're carrying no items so let's test this out the final time now go click up the stone and we should see the icons change there we go and if i click on a tree it will change here and when they return back to base they should drop off some stone And there is the stone being collected. If we go pick up the tree, and then we go to pick up some wood. And there you go, there you have it. So now we can collect multiple resources. And you should hopefully see if you want if you have a desire to add more resources to your game, maybe like gold or food or whatever, you can see the system of how you actually accomplish this now. So thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch the next episode where we start work on the attack, uh, attacking of other characters, check it out on patreon.com forward slash Ryanlaley. From just $1 you can access all my videos before anyone else. So big thank you to all my patrons, YouTube members and subscribers for your continued support. If you're watching this and you have yet to subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really does help out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.